We're gonna have 100 people here. Our presentations alone are gonna blow people away. I want every single person to leave better than they came. I'm going out, okay. That workflow was perfect, it just blew my mind. I just think what I learned already is really gonna help add 20, 30% onto my business this year. First time in the US, actually, yeah. Where do you come from? Germany. From Dubai, 14 hours of flight. I love having the round table, super valuable. Lily and Alex have made me millions of dollars and feel me to not come out here. Just that people have a positive experience, that's all that matters. Hang on, just to go, thank God. <laughs> I'm about to help 100 business owners scale their businesses in one day. We are having our first acquisition.com scaling workshop of the year here at our acquisition.com headquarters. I checked three times to make sure the email went out with like the date and time. <laughs> but like, I still like am paranoid that like, what if it didn't? The morning of the first workshop, I got there and like everyone was coming in through the front doors and I went in through the back because I had no makeup on. There's hella people downstairs. Oh man, I feel nervous. No, no, not about talking. Just like, I just wanna make sure it all goes okay. I don't think that I was nervous. I think that I had actually just a healthy amount of concern. I, lo I love presenting and stuff and I'm not worried. I just like want to make sure everything else goes okay. Yeah. It's the venue piece that was the giant pain in the ass I never realized. Mostly around not the value that we would deliver as a team, but I had never hosted a venue for people before. Yeah, there's just always like bumps. But yeah, every time I pointed something out, Yaz was like, I'm on it. And I was like, okay. To be the one in charge of the building, getting the caterers, getting the table set up, that was actually the piece that I was more concerned with because I've just never done it before. So I don't feel pressure in that. I feel way more distracted with like nerves with some of our team. They're all so good at what they do. Oh, they're all excited. A lot of them professionally presented in their last roles. So like they sound amazing and they're funny and I think they carry the fear Alex and I have. But it's like few of our teammates are quite nervous. Not because they're not good at what they do because they're nervous talking to so many people. I gave them a little message last night and I was just like, dude, the only thing that matters is focus on the people. Like leave everybody better than they came. That is the goal. I reminded them that yesterday, I was like, if you see somebody, don't just like smile, ask them how they're doing and if you can help them with anything. Have a meal? Okay, so Jesus, Manuel, and Julio. Where are you all coming from? Spain. Spain, wow. So there's breakfast back there. Good morning. Hey, dude. This person fucking flew here from across the country to, to ask us one question. Like, we're gonna fucking stay late and answer it. I'm not gonna kick them out, what the fuck? If I needed to, I could speak to every person in that room and give them the value they're hoping for. We, we have a survey that we're gonna have them all fill out at the end, so just for them to say that it was better than they thought. Or, <laughs> since it's the first one, it is what they thought. <laughs> that would be good. What would make it like a win coming out of this weekend? Kind of taking everything like a sponge, learning everything I can. So I've never really had a mentor. I've never really been taught things. And of course, you know, getting more leads is never a bad thing. So learning how to get different leads from different avenues. Like have read the books and we feel like we've just scratched the surface and there's so much more that we can be doing. No idea what to expect and we're okay with it. So we started acquisition.com with one thing in mind and that was that we would only have the portfolio for five to seven years. It seemed like probably take us that long to get the amount of companies we wanted. When we started, things change. The amount of deals that we get that come in is unfathomable compared to what I thought would. 35,000 people a month asking for help, 2,000 of which are qualified to be a portfolio company. That's a lot more than I was expecting. And so, you know, we have the portfolio, but it is something that can only deliver value to a very small number of people. For the 34,998 people that we don't take as a portfolio company, what can we do to add value to their lives? So if I take all of those resources and skills and bucket them together, it tells me that workshops would be a great way to deliver value. Something can happen with the food, something can happen with AV, like all that stuff, but like that shit does not matter. Gym launch, our third event ever, we had 500 people and me and Yasmin put it all together by ourselves. And the AV was so fucked up. The music, the food, like we didn't get enough food. And like everyone actually like loved that. They were like, that's so cool. You guys are so human, but you like wanted to really do this event. <laughs> so they were all like, this was better than I expected. Despite all of that, because we talked about it, we, we were open, we we're like, oh, it's all fucked up. And guess what? We don't know how to fix it but they got value and that's all that matters. Like the stuff you're doing, is it valuable? So when that girl messaged me and she's like, I got the wrong email. I was like, oh my God, I'm sorry. Our autoresponder was like fucking up right now. And she was like, the fact that you just said that just made my life. And I was like, why? She's like, because I make mistakes too. And I was like, I say that all the time. I try to be in my content about like, I'm not perfect. Love the look, all of it. The lashes, I could make them a little more dramatic. Like I can add some corners, but I didn't know if this was enough. I always like more, but, <laughs> but, I, but I like them too. Like they look great. Hey, how's it going? Oh, yeah. I'm ready. Oh. 
You didn't want to go watch? <laughs> but I want to watch the team. So I'm going to see if I can like go, can go in the, the... I think we go down the stairs in the back. Then we can, we can duck in the back. That's what I was going to say is like the back corner or something. Yeah. We can like, you well, know... From the studio side, like on that side. Yeah. Well, welcome. Uh, you know, we are humbled and excited to see so many people, so many good I think the initial reaction from the team was normal. I think any time that you have a change going on in your company, how you communicate it is really important because if I have a change I wanna make in my company, it's not about how it's going to affect the company, it's about how it's going to affect every individual person. The way that I tend to roll out a change, like proposing that we do workshops, is I will meet with each individual leader that reports to me and discuss the change and how it will impact them. My name's Ben Rodman. I'm the Managing Director of Business Development at Acquisition.com. And so what that means here is I run the process of evaluating companies, looking for deals for us to invest in, structuring those deals, performing due diligence, and ultimately closing them when all goes well. So how did I get this job? Well, Given it is very different than what people do, like quote their day job, it caused nervousness at first. I think that until we got through the first one, I didn't think that people would like truly quell their nervousness, mostly because I think a lot of people on my team have not been reinforced for things like workshops or events. And so I think that once our team went through that first one, that was when they were like, wow, this is really fucking cool. We started a little late and now we're 15 minutes early. Okay, nice. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going good. So we're working on badges right now. I just want to meet everybody, but I can't. Yeah, that's the shit. I, like, want to go say hi. I'm like, oh, my God, and watch our team. Yeah, we disrupt the whole time. I walked in and looked around and everything. So it was, like, yeah, five minutes gone. Wait, I got it. <laughs> Kidding. She more than me. That one seems good. Really, really good. <sighs> well, hello. How do you feel? You feel good? Yeah. Yeah, it all came together. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. exciting. Me and Alex were like, all right, we'll go down. And he was like, should I get to distract people if we fucking sit there? Mm -hmm. So I think one thing I wrote down that for next time is to have a room that it streams in so we can watch. Yes, that's a great yeah. thing. Yeah. So we can like... I have to figure out, I'll work with the AV to kind of like make it basically like a grid of grain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I want to give everyone feedback, but I feel like... You don't want to be in there and distract yeah. people for sure. Mm -hmm. To do it, we wouldn't learn what to do better. Oh like, my God, yeah, it'll be fine. For our first event, like nothing big went wrong. So anytime I roll out a new process, what I do is I have a document that I create for the team that's working on it. And then I can usually list categories. So like for events, it might be like venue, food, seating, guest experience, like all of these things. And then I just ask everyone live while everything is happening to keep that document pulled up so they can just add all their thoughts in real time of the things they're observing that are happening. I've just found that when people have something that I'm constantly pushing for them to be filling out live, I get way better feedback than if they do it after the fact. Yeah, you know, it's like we talked about all this like logistics and I was like last night I was sitting there thinking like I just want everyone to have a great experience and I was like, oh my God, I feel like I haven't even said anything about that to anybody. No, I didn't. You forget when we're like all caught up in the other. It is. I wanted everything to go as smoothly as possible and so we were all at the office pretty late the night before to make sure that everything went off without a hitch. Let's go look uh, downstairs at the event area. I want to go see what everything looks like down there. I feel good. I just I just want to get it scaled as quickly as we can. Oh, look. Oh, shit. We got furniture? They didn't even tell me. Obviously, the room is still getting set up, but what's your first impression? I mean, it looks way better with the drapes. The sound. It's not echoed. Oh, the sign. They all look so good. Don't they? They're all on brand. Ty did all of that. Ty, it looks so good. Are you excited? Yeah. Dude, this looks good. You're a fucking badass, Yasmin. I feel relief more than anything. I'm like, oh, thank God. Like yeah. Because the stage will come up and it's about this high. I need it. I love it. It sounds good. <laughs> Davina said that we could do karaoke here for a night for like a team activity. <laughs> I love it. Yasmin, you, do, you did so good. I know you've been yeah. fucking busting ass. When you guys get to see it and feel proud that you guys have this. Because then I know that I succeeded it. I am a perfectionist. 
I mean, it's good because as am I, so it helps yeah. if other people are too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks really good. And so when we, I said, I want to do these workshops and I don't think it makes sense to hire some workshop planner when we haven't done them before. Like we should get the playbook and then we just figured it out. So is this area gonna have, oh, that is food area. I figured right that people here. can just like, when they're networking or when they're eating and stuff, yeah. and then I'll catering over there. I'm already I feeling like- I tables here because of, to go along with the sitting area. So it's all like- Yeah. Yeah, no, it actually looks it. really good. It's smart. It doesn't feel like an office space. No. no it looks so good. Much. Yes. I was telling Danny, I was like, I didn't even know that we got this. It looks great. Yeah. It takes a different kind of person to go from zero to one than from one to 10. And so she has a skill set of going to zero to one and we can do that together all day. That's what she did. She just threw herself into the fire. I kind of want to run through the slides more than like them rehearse them. We edited them a lot. So I kind of want us to all just double check, like do our edits all look cohesive with each other's? Like do my exercise slides look like yours for the exercises that are added in? Money. money. That's what the money is for. Clarify the why and then we've got communicate the benefits. All right. Tell the story, haha, ha, but matches. Having everyone rehearse multiple times to get those reps in as quickly as possible. It's because most people on our team are really talented with those things. And so they can do it without a ton of practice, but I prefer to have everything like fine-tuned before it goes on a stage. I think we're fine. I just wanna see his, and then I wanna see the changes in Neil's, but this was one of was more, because they made a lot of work. So to investors, to really to, to, to entrepreneurs, it's the hardest thing should be one, right? One or two, or one or zero. Yeah. 50 over. Change it so it makes it more interactive. Let's do an actual run of show with this one. Stand up and do it. Obviously this is in a moment, like you have time, but like before hiring, like you should be able to come, like you, you might need to research this role more. Give them context of it and ask the question, what are your thoughts? How would you solve this problem? How would you go about solving it? I think I just felt really excited seeing everything coming together. Oh my God, it looks so good compared to what I was expecting. Oh, amazing. Oh, sweet. Yeah, this is cool. Just like in the time we had with the resources we had, yeah, I was exactly. like, wow, it looks better than I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I've had bigger companies than acquisition.com, something feels different about having your own space and knowing that you own it and it is really gratifying. So it, it felt really cool. Yeah, it's a completely different space with the curtains. It, it feels a bit more intimate as well. It does, yeah. Chairs here in terms of like when does that? Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Dude, I really cannot get over how much you make over this place in like a week. We were just here, it didn't look anything like this. I know. Even like the furniture, like the chairs, like everything. Like none of this was here like a week ago. I know, I know, it's crazy. Was the information useful? Like, was it? Great, yeah. Really? Oh, cool. I'll go through my presentation. Alex is gonna tie it all together and go through kind of like summarizing each one and pulling it all in. So I think that's gonna help a lot too. And then tomorrow we'll be doing all the Q and A's and round tables. So I think it'll be helpful. Thank you so much for everything. Yeah, that's really sweet. <laughs> Sometimes I hope that people just, when they hear it, are like, wait, that's really it? Rather than like, oh, there's this crazy good thing. It's like, no, it's really that. That's yeah. really it. It's just, it's boring and it's hard and it yeah, fucking sucks. It's, 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 <laughs> all right, so Scott, you give me a one. So how long after the end of the month does it take for you to get to the financials? Fucking no, I just look at my strike department. <laughs> Gonna have to disagree with you. I mentioned bring questions. Guys, there's like so many people from around the world. Around the world. That's cool. You just see they came from in the person the impact, like that there's people around the world begging for like to see you guys in the workshop. Yeah, it was crazy to see how many people came from like Dubai, France, Australia, the UK, New Zealand, just to come attend the workshop. And I think it's really cool because I think if you make that commitment to come all the way over here, I, I hope that the likelihood they take action is higher. Literally three days ago, we, we said we need to redo, our, we need to make our presentations like so that people can fill shit out with them. So we changed all the presentations. And then, we're, then, then a day ago, we were like, wait, we should have workbook. <laughs> I think that the worst thing that can happen is that you go to a workshop and you're not able to clearly understand what actions you take after the workshop. And I care less about how much information somebody gets from a workshop. I care more that they actually learn, which means that they do something differently when they leave. And so I realized four days ahead of time that part of facilitating that would also be having a workbook to go along with the workshop so that people could clearly outline what they're gonna do differently when they leave. And he was like, I feel like this is gonna make them feel like their business is like not good. And I was like, that's what you want. You want them to understand where the gap is. Like they're, they're here to hear from us what you should know. 
if they don't even know it exists or it's like an important thing, they're never gonna try. I care less about how much information somebody gets from a workshop. I care more that they actually learn, which means that they do something differently when they leave. And we tried really hard to reinforce that. I would love if like everyone has, can get up there and do something at some point. You know what I mean? Like we give everyone enough chances that it's like, sure. all of you guys feel super comfortable. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this. Uh, okay, maybe tell the security guys. Oh, because they're supposed to be with you or whatever. Hey, you have like fans all over the building. I'm gonna go down the elevator too. Fine. I will alert the forces. I remember Yaz, Yaz a few times at events, people like went up to her, they're like, what is, what's Layla do in the morning? What does she eat? What? And she was like, what the fuck? <laughs> she was like, that's none of your business. Oh, yeah. I mean, if someone's smart, they would ask someone's assistant all the questions because they know everything. I mean, I think it's cool for everyone to meet people in person. I like it more. And we meet someone who's like, I watched your content, it's taken me from a million to 10 million. You hear someone's tonality and you see their facial expression and you're like, wow, they really mean it. Are you speaking today? Yeah. Yeah. Who to hire? I know. Our CEO knows this inside and out. This is one of the things that we do best as a company and help set our portfolio companies up for success. I'm not worried about presenting. It's actually weird. I realize it's like now I do so much like our next presentation, how to get your who presenting and talking and podcast like it goes off. Yeah. Are you as nervous? It's going to be done by our very own Layla Hermosi. And nothing now. Nothing. Hi. So after the first half of the day, it's now time for me to go down and present. So how to get your who and solve your constraint without more of your time or skills. Because I think something that I noticed in talking to all of you is that you essentially, when there's a people problem, it usually means that you as the founder or CEO or leader in a company are the constraint. By the end of our time together, you guys are gonna know how to solve the constraint of your business without more of your time. This is the way that we built all of our businesses. This is the reason that I can be up here and not having to also put together the entire event and do every single thing, right? Because we want to make sure that you guys are able to grow your businesses, but more importantly, you can't become detracted or distracted from everything else that you're already doing to make it work. So kind reminder to all of you, if you walk away and implement none of this, then you did not learn. And so whoever walks away and implements this the fastest is the smartest person in the room. That is all. I appreciate you guys and your time. Thought that if anyone else talked about how people are important, it would not cause people to take action as much as if I were the one presenting that people were important because of my authority in that space. And I want people to walk away with that. Hi guys, how, how are you? Good. Amazing. Great. Amazing. You did amazing you guys, today. Yes. Really? Absolutely. Yes, amazing. thank you. Yeah. It's so hard. I still get so self-conscious. I'm like, fuck, are they, is this, nobody's talking. I'm like, are they absorbing or are they like, fuck this shit? The you only know reason I mean? I'm here was because I watched one of your videos and it was workshop. And really? Like, it's funny because when you go up on stage to an audience, you don't know when they're quiet, if they're quiet because they're like intently listening or if because you fucking suck. And so it's the same either way. Like I've gone up on stages where I'm like, no, they, they thought I sucked and they're just quiet. This was, I went up on stage, people were quiet because they were intently listening. I think there are some subjects that come better for myself and some that come better from Alex. What I would consider myself like an expert in is probably building teams and assembling individuals into groups. We actually so, met at Traffic and Conversions last year. I see Layla, I have to answer, ask her one question, and I'm just like, I'm doing like 100 grand a month. What should I do? She's like, hire an ops person. I'm like, the next day I hired an ops person. And then we like jumped in revenue. I was like, I do what she did. Oh, that's so I'm good. cool. Yeah, Hell so I, yeah. I, when I found out about the workshop, I hopped on the call, I'm like, dude, I don't care how much it is, run my credit card. <laughs> this is like my best attempt of like, I think workshops and in-person is like the best way to impact people. It was hard because you have to also get a building, which took like a year. It's what feels good to me. Like I wouldn't want to do anything less than like something we can make excellent and have a lot of control over the environment, you know? It's awesome because I applied. Yeah. <laughs> Someone yeah. from the team was like, oh, we don't work with companies from Australia. And I was so sad. And then when I, I saw this event, I was like, We've tried. It's just, it's very complicated. Yeah. Something I thought that was really interesting is people were like, for our foreign people, there was a lot of people who had said that they, they, they've been saying that they've applied, but they can't be portfolio company because they're foreign, so they're so happy that they can come to these events. Yes. We don't look at investing in companies that are foreign, and so this is a great alternative for people that want to you know, get help from our portfolio team. When you ask people, like they actually are like, this is so good, Like I'm, I'm learning so much because I am so critical and I know there's so much that could be so much better. But like, you know what's cool too is like they were like, this building is so cool. And like to me, I'm like, all I see is everything that needs to fix. <laughs>
The building is the biggest pain in my ass I have ever had in my life. It feels like if I had twins unexpectedly, that is what occurred. I didn't realize all of the things that can go wrong in a building. So if you think about like a house, probably like every couple weeks, like one thing breaks. It's like, oh, the pipe in here, or ah, oh, that heater, or oh, that vent. And when you have like a building that's like 40 times the size of a house, you have 40 times more things breaking. And it was definitely a hustle. Like the team busted their asses, but I still feel like there's just, it's so far from what I want it to be. How was Layla's talk? Yeah. 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 I know it's a lot, but really we, we think it's, it's the best we can do is give you what we know. I'd like to introduce the next speaker. And I don't need to say much because you all probably know him. Please welcome Alex Hermosa. Ah, wonderful. All right, so hopefully we didn't um, too business you up to this point. It's been an interesting challenge for us to kind of think through like, if I wanted to make everybody here the most amount of money in the shortest period of time, how could I do that, right? And the people that you saw on stage up to this point actually do this. If there's one thing that I hope that all of you guys take away from all the stuff that we put today is that you do have a constraint in your business. If you have been working all day, every day, for a long time, and you are not making more money, you are working on the wrong shit. If the only thing that we can give you from today and tomorrow is clarity on what your constraint is, I'm fucking stoked because I have seen people get stuck for two years, four years, eight years because of one thing. And when I say one thing, it's identifying the problem. I'm not saying like that is the first step is admitting you have a problem, right? <laughs> you still got to solve it, but at least solving the right problem will get you there faster. Appreciate you guys. I thought I was doing that right. I'm That's like, the what the fuck? All right. You know, I got people coming in. It's just, hey, I can't serve you for four, five, six weeks. Well, duh, that's the problem. But it's one of those things, if you're in it every day, you really don't see that. You think, oh, I need more marketing, marketing. No, that's not really what I need at this point. A big part of just like the last presentation, for example, was actually looking at our uh, business from an investor's point of view. Now that we are able to like look at it from an investor's point of view, we kind of have like a non-biased look at what our business actually looks like. And that is a better way for us to start to know, hey, this is where we are currently. How do we get to like a further place? As Alex was saying, I don't even think it's like about those you know silver bullets. It's all about those golden BBs, which are like, there's so many small things that you don't even realize that if you start practicing and doing those things, that's where you get the most results from. First time in the US, crazy. What made you think that? You know, standing a 14-hour flight be worth it for this for this event. Bro, <laughs> Armozy, uh, the team, like, of course, of course. That's cool. That's helpful. When I started being kind of, I was like, I don't know who the fuck's gonna listen to this. So. <laughs> I thought I was here to see your husband. Turns out I'm here to see you because my problem is really a who problem. So I just want to oh, say that's thank really you. fucking cool. Thank you, Scott. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. See you guys again. Yeah. Hey. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you too. Yeah. Oh, that's super cool. Where do you come from? Germany. Oh shit. But then we we're afraid we we're gonna go burn through all the market. So should we do like gym lunch type of stuff? Don't ever be afraid about burning through the market. <laughs> you won't. Are you There's sure? new ones popping up all the time. I promise you. The, the most successful businesses, like if you look at our portfolio, the ones that are fucking crushing it, they're making more mistakes than any other businesses. They're also having more success. If you want more success, you have way more mistakes. I felt really good after day one. By the end of the day, after I got to socialize with people after I spoke, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a great vibe. You loved it. I was just going to say. Mean you know that. I actually don't ever feel that way. I'm so self-conscious, but thank you. No, 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 no. You're incredible. I could just like stare at you talk. You're amazing. Good job. And then everyone was like, this has been amazing. Wow. So day one is a lot of information. And they have the information. Now they need to figure out what to do in what order. And I've hosted events and the roundtables were always the highest rated. And that's why we have day two, which is a much more consultative approach that our team takes to personally working through their questions with them, their constraints, and all of the workbook that they've filled out to help them determine the action steps they have to take when they leave. getting to meet people and talk to them and hear how the event or even just like the content that brought them into the event has helped them. That was my favorite part. It's just nice. You see comments and you get messages, but it's different when somebody like you see it in person, you see their eyes light up and like the way they're there, like so excited. It's just reaffirming that you make good stuff. Welcome to day two. How's everybody feeling? Um, we're gonna start with a Q&A session with Alex to kick off and then we'll be setting up for round tables with our subject matter experts. I'll introduce them prior to the way we'll work is we'll have seven different groups and the subject matter experts and then they will rotate and then close the day with Q&A with 
way. Some presentations are going to set the frame for like how to think through some of the pieces of their business that they may have been thinking through incorrectly. Here he is for Q and A. Please welcome Al. So my, my question is, uh, when you're looking at portfolio companies, when you're working with them, are there questions you're asking to help them to further define their brand? And when that is for better defined, um, how are you leveraging it? Slash, like, how is that impacting overall enterprise value? I don't talk about brand because so few people do it or understand it or have the patience for it. It's been really real. And uh, investors, like, they will value brand. Oftentimes, they actually undervalue it, in my opinion. And so they will still boil everything down to a scorecard. Awesome. Thank you. Yep, yeah, of course. I own a brick and mortar yoga studios right. and also virtual. And I always want it to be sellable whether I ever end up selling it or not, like I always want it to be sellable. I'm curious about, like I see you as the subject matter expert and I'm curious if anything you see from me and then of what your strategy is. Your trait is that you don't know how to transfer what you know to other people. Absolutely. The thing that would make it very valuable in yoga chain would be to have some sort of proprietary or better way to train people that onboard mm -hmm. somebody who doesn't have skills and make them have skills so they can deliver the same value at scale. Yeah. We're kind of at a pivot point of what do we need to do to scale the most? I, mean, I, I feel like I can solve the problem really quickly. Okay. So you need an operator, and you need to keep selling people what they want. Uh, These have actually been really good questions, by the way. These are really real questions. And uh, a lot of other times, I've had really heavy metric-based questions. And so it's like, all right, that's going to take me a minute. I'm going to get back to that. But yeah, these have been great, so continue being able to do that with them live and help answer their questions and iterate, and then go into like, okay, you have an entire day where you're talking to our team, getting to work through your actual problems. I'm really excited about it. This is where all the subject matter experts are stationed at different tables, and we break, I think, into seven different groups, and so we are going to be doing 13, 14 people per table, and so I think it's roughly 20 to 30 minutes per table, and we'll just be going around and answering as many questions as we can. Yeah, well, I think presentations are great for conveying some sort of knowledge, but actually, like, to make this really actionable, you have to know a little bit more about each individual business, and you can't really do that in a room with 100 people, and you can't really do that in a presentation. So I think the roundtable is going to be really fun because it gives us a chance to learn about them and also get a chance to work with them and hopefully make a difference, like actually make this action. You know, they're going to get to ask 30, 40 questions to various people that are specific to their business. So I'm Paul, a Director of Marketing and Acquisition. I handle the principal marketing for acquisition and I assist with some of the portfolio. I have a nature to love helping people and growing businesses, so the fact that I can use some of my knowledge and experience, even learn from some of my mistakes so they don't make them, I'm absolutely thrilled to really do that. One of the best affiliate guys I've ever known who did the book launch is sitting right there, and he's definitely the guy to talk to about affiliate. One, is, have you seen like a better system to acquire them at scale? And then two, do you know what some of the key hires would be to scale the organization? I recommend it's potentially looking at getting an affiliate manager. You can get them on like a commission only basis, so it costs you nothing. People can sign up an affiliate and oftentimes it doesn't lead anywhere. And the reason for that is because of what happens afterwards, like how you manage that relationship in order for it to be productive. I had just asked myself like, what would I want? Yes, I want all of the information and I want to have my takeaways and all that, but I also want personal time with each quote expert. It's just giving people what you would want. Would you say actually having a base and commission is better? Or do you think that detracts from them pushing to close as well? Yeah, so I mean, there's just like different ways to, like, to structure it, right? So if it's something that there's like more inconsistency throughout the year, because if I give them no leads one month and they don't make any money that month, they will go crazy, freak out, and leave this job, right? So it's like, if that is the case, a lot of the times, I will say, okay, cool, here's a $50,000 base. Alex and I have actually spent a good amount of time talking about this. We like sales teams that are 100%. When you have great people who are motivated intrinsically by the work and feel well compensated and work really hard, don't always need commission, but the end of the equation is always, what is the range of pay that I'm happy with my sales team earning? And then I go through like, how many calls are they gonna take? What should their close rate be? And then in an ideal world, my sales guys hit their metrics, they're right in my salary. In theory, anybody who's an optimizer on a platform, rightfully so, will say, if you niche down, you will grow faster. And it is true, but for how long? If you stop at two years, it was pointless to grow fast for two years versus if you do it for 10. What you offer, if you speak about that, and the audience is like, oh, kind of interested in that. If you start talking about the NBA, and somebody's really into the NBA, or loves LeBron James, or whatever, they're gonna fuck with you more.
just like friendships, right? Like when you start working at a company, if you go to a new company, you go to a new school, a new town, whatever, you put on this version of yourself, right? Like a new company, it's like this professional version of yourself. And slowly as you get comfortable, you start to open up about personal things about yourself. And guess what happens? You all of a sudden develop a work home. And the reason why is because you have another thing in common other than just the work. It's the same in building an audience. And so I meet with Layla and she was able to paint this picture of her vision so clearly and so articulately that I could see how I could build within it. But like the same things that work in a relationship, like work in other relationships. Mm -hmm. And think about that with the way you, you deploy like these tactics with your customers, with your employees. So sell, actually celebrate the six months, celebrate the year that you've been together, reflect back on it, right? Like Wins are a very important yeah. part of the customer journey. Relationships are so impactful to Neil's point that when you build a relationship based off of proactive communication and value in a product, or service, you, it's a win-win across the board and you make a lot of money. The hardest part then is you have to train your clients to be like, support goes here. Yeah, like, and that is so yeah. hard because we've put posts, we've put pictures, and it's like, honestly. Because there's so many constraints that I have identified, yeah. so it's like, how do I know which ones to start on? Do you have a sales problem, do you have an ops problem, or do you have a people problem, right? What, what, which of those three are the most sort of limiting for you in your business? Your onboarding and your customer journey is going to look different depending on what industry. And I've learned through going through different customer journeys and revamping them is you want to think of activation points. Do you have a customer journey? I was going to ask that too. Not really. So they have their weekly meetings with the account manager and they have a monthly meeting with Elliot and myself. Like like the owners, is like their founder poll, just a touch base, anything like that. I'd recommend that. Yeah, no, it's really important. At what point are you weaning away from your credibility or branding as a person and then taking it into the brand itself? Once you have the people that you feel comfortable passing the baton to. My team laughs because I send them handwritten cards from time to time. The framework for how to think about your product and your offer is the same no matter what your industry. And it starts mm -hmm. with talking to your potential customers. Direct response business and percentage of sales marketing is huge. Because if we got to a point of the chargeback, what happened earlier on that caused this client to go to that degree, where did we fail? So that's where we go back and do postmortems and like, what happened here that would cause someone to do a chargeback? Sometimes you can just send a gift. The more thoughtful, the better. I'm very intentional in doing those things. And those things matter more. Right, right, right. We put out all the free game, unbelievable amount in the content. Content is just like, take what we're saying and apply the, apply the principles. And that's good, but it's a lot of times people need an extra step because it's not like I have context on someone's business when I'm making content. I have context on my own life and experiences. And so for some people, things we say don't apply or they might we might change our minds of what we would suggest. So it's just a personalized solution rather than one that you're delivering through content. I mean, there's a lot of people down there that think they, they ask me something and I was like, they want permission from me or from Alex to already do what they know they need to do. And it feels like, oh, if I have their stamp of approval, then it's really the right thing to do. I think everybody needs someone like that in their life that they feel like, if they say I should do this, then I should do it. So I'm just gonna give us another couple minutes here. I know Layla's coming down, and then we'll kick off the Q&A. Please give a warm welcome to Layla for our next Q&A session. How are you guys feeling? Good. Cool. Do you feel like you did get most of your questions answered? Yeah. You need more questions. All right, cool. So if you've got a question, please raise your hand, and then I'm just gonna try and get through as many as we can. What's up, Albert? So, it got answered already, but I'm gonna ask it again, because I want your perspective. How would you go about finding leadership roles in a local market, given that you're limited to a 20 mile or 15 mile range of a brick and mortar? When it comes to brick and mortar, especially local, people who have done that well, often they find people in larger companies who are unhappy and typically are willing to take a pay cut to work somewhere where they feel like they have an impact. I've seen that work really well. If you were the CEO of an e-learning company, how would you be thinking about AI and technology strategy? I wouldn't be panicking because I think that there are a lot of people who still are slow to move. The second is that I would be asking myself, does the company need to become a different company to be here in 10 years? And then what kind of company would it need to become? And how long do I have to remain as is? Because a lot of people change too early because they freak out and they have high emotions, right, which I've seen, and then they basically could have had another good three years, but they don't because they change too quickly. 
Right, so I actually know of a company that's similar. They're an e-learning company, and when I was like, what kind of company do they need to become to be around 10 years? It was like, they need to integrate AI, right? They need to become the leader in AI in that space. How do you handle days that you feel like your company is going to 100 million, you feel like you have a great opportunity, and then the next day you're like, holy shit, I can't do this, it'll never happen, it's not for me, it's not possible. <laughs> I do not subscribe to most of the thoughts that come through my head. <laughs> I just look at the evidence. If every time a thought comes through your head about your business, you listen to it, it creates chaos in the business. If you could go back in time to when you were first starting Gym Launch and you had a really lean budget to invest in a team, how would you go about structuring your executive team? I would hire for the thing I didn't know how to do and was bad at. So the first executive hire I had was a CFO. Now, if you're a small company, I don't even know if you need to hire an executive team when you're small. I actually didn't hire the executive team first. I hired doers, and then I hired managers. Started the first business that we have, I do recruiting to survive, and things are going great. That being said, not like long-term what I want to do. Yeah. And I grew up wanting to do gaming stuff, and so understanding business, I feel like it makes a lot more sense. I'd love to do what I've always wanted to do. That's great. Here's the thing. If you know that you don't want to be in recruiting in five years, then it makes more sense to change now and get more time under your belt in the thing you do want to fucking do. What were some of the main skills that you had to develop uh, when you stepped into that CEO role? And did you get a mentor to help you with those? I don't know if I ever had like a mentor, but I had different people I would pay for advice and then take the common threads that all those people said. You know, and I mean, I read every standard business book you can, not because I think that there's like some silver bullet in a book, but because I always want to see like, what are the things that all of the books say? And from your knowledge is pretty much advanced, which I've seen usually when you get older. So I wonder either you get it through life experience by yourself or somebody has been there and told you and helped you and supported you? At this exact moment, no. I think it's this, is that I think I have a lot of life experience. Like, for, for how old I am, I think I have accumulated a lot more experience than most people might. I think that would be fair to say objectively. I think that I have been lucky enough to meet people who have helped me articulate that experience. Alex is much more articulate than I am, and who is more articulate than either of us would be one of our friends named Starter Cash. And he has been able to help me articulate the things that I already know. So I might come to him and say, here's this thing that I've learned and I'm dealing with, and I'd like to be able to articulate it. Here's like, here's the words for it. He studies behavioral psychology. And so that has helped me a lot in terms of making content and teaching. This was a question um, more about your, your content. I've noticed that over the past few months, short few months, your content has changed. It seems like now it's shifted a little bit more into who you are. You're still a serious CEO, but there's also Layla the person. Changes as simple as like, I didn't, I've never seen you in anything other than, you know, professional attire. Yeah. And then recently I saw you in like a pink hoodie and it was just yeah. different. And I was like, wow, that's yeah. different. I wanted to know, you know, as somebody who is tweaking their strat or their content strategy as well to implement more of myself rather than who I thought I was supposed to be, just niche based. What has been the response you've seen in your content and how has that helped you uh, formulate new ideas that you didn't have like eight months ago? For the most part, it's been very positive. One is like my skill on camera has gotten a lot higher. So like, I'm much more comfortable on camera. You know, like Alex had all the years that we ran gym launch being on camera making ads. I didn't have any of that. You know, I was just like behind the scenes like running a company. So it's like, I just wasn't ever on camera. And so when I first started making content, it was the first time also ever being on camera, I didn't have a good skill of being on camera. I also didn't have the team we have now that had the skill of capturing. Um, the second piece is, in the beginning when I was making content, I was just doing what people told me work. They were like, talk about these things, that's what people want to hear. I like, I don't even like surf the platforms enough for me to know, so I was just like, okay. And I always want to be a student if I'm new at something. So it's like, as good as I was at like running a business, I was that bad at like thinking about content. And so I was just like, I'll do what people say until I figure it out on my own. And I think that I've been able to start figuring it out a little bit more. And I think the next piece with it is just, I have changed as a person. And so that is reflected in my content. I think that you know we, we sold Gym Launch and been focusing a lot on different things. And I think like what me and Alex do now is even different than we did then. And so like I am acquiring different and new skills and probably looking at how I run a company differently. Like I really believe that 
one of the best things I can do for my whole team is like as much as possible show my own flaws and mistakes because I think that I used to think in order to be a good leader I had to cover those up and I realized that it's the, quite the opposite. You know, I make mistakes all the time. If I don't show them the mistakes I'm making, if I'm not vulnerable in front of them, they don't think they can and they try to hide them from me, they get stressed, etc. And so I actually just took the exact same frames I had to leading a team and said, wouldn't that be the same for building an audience? Like if I don't, I want to make them feel that way. I want them to feel like they can make mistakes. I want them to feel like Layla's not perfect. And so my goal has always just been like, how can I be the same person to you guys and to people that watch me on the internet that I am to my team? And so the moment that I made that switch and I was like, if I can think of the audience like I think of my team, like what are the lessons that I can exemplify? It helped me a lot, like become more of myself because I realized that I wasn't setting the example I wanted to for people that were watching. And I think that having a brand versus getting views are very different things. And if you actually have that mentality, I think you've built a fantastic brand. I think a lot of people get a lot of views and they flash in the pan and they're like really cool for like two, three years and then they go away because they don't have any depth. There's no depth to character. People don't know who they are. I'm still figuring it out. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm still super new to it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I like Q&As because I think it gives me a chance to solve one person's problem. And in my day job of running the company, I solve typically one person's problem at a time. And so for me to be answering one person's questions is actually the most natural thing for me. It's probably what I'm best at. All right, I appreciate you guys. All right, guys. Sadly, this is where we leave you. But thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming, for your questions, for trusting us with your business, for listening here. So that was the first event, and we actually have the second one in three days. We're moving pretty quickly and seeing how they go. Committed to doing minimum of one a month. See what happens. I think there's a lot of iterations that can come of this. There's a lot of different types of workshops we can do in the future, and then we'll go from there. Thanks so much spending this time with you, and we hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Like the next level depth, like is with like the worksheets and like literally going through doing the math, of, like EBITDA and like all, just all those things. And then every step of the way, having someone right there, I can be like, wait, I'm confused. Or like, wait, you know, I can't raise my hand when I'm reading a book, but here. I can. Hi, I'm Taylor. We're from the Gold Coast in Australia. And something that I loved that was so different to events that I've been to before was having the round tables with the subject matter ex experts. I've never had that done before at any other event and it was super valuable. You know that what they're giving you is based on experience. They're not hypothesizing about what they think might work. I think it's really good to be kind of hit in the face with the raw numbers and just see like you really need to improve in this area or like this thing's really, you know, problematic. You need to fix that. I love your content. Oh my gosh. Oh, thank you so much. That was very sweet. Yeah, Layla's amazing because I mean, Layla talks with maybe tens of business owners every hundreds, maybe. And I talked with her very briefly online. I see her six months later in person and she remembers me. That's the sign of like a good leader and because they, they just care. Yeah, I didn't really know what to focus on. Now I have a set plan when I go home, I'm gonna be grinding every day. So sales is definitely our weakest link. And uh, we have a just huge opportunity there. And then also me, so like how can I work myself out and like get a great leadership team in. So those are the two things that it feels like it's like time to go home and go to work on those things. We read the book and we were like, this is the best business book I've ever read. Basically doubled our company, brought us over the million dollar mark. The changes we made in that 90 day window were unreal and we've been, we went from like literally thinking there's no way that guy's doing what he's doing because it was so impressive that it was like hard to believe to obviously completely believing it from first-hand experience of the implementation of what he does. And I was like okay like what's stopping me from getting to the next point point? and yeah. that's like oh like if I come here some beliefs are gonna be broken which they were. That was very helpful and also made me realize that I need to know like off the top of my head or have somewhere just like laid out all the numbers for my business so when I go home I will be recalculating all that um, but that was really helpful and then I can see what I need to work on and like what I need to change. I'm very happy to, to have come from Spain for the day. I did an emergency meeting last night with my team um, because I know that it's not only the things that you learn, it's about the implementation and the action, right? There was no time to lose. It was actually pretty special. I was expecting him just to kind of talk about the industry, the online education industry and what what he thought was going to happen out of that, but then he really started questioning my values and what I was doing as an individual, as a, as a home builder. and. Am I focusing on the right thing, i.e. going into coaching? And he, he questioned my value of why I wanted to go into coaching versus stick with the main thing, which is building houses. Uh, to be honest, Layla and Alex have made me 
millions of dollars, <laughs> just like frankly speaking, and then like taught me for free. So it would have been foolish of me to not come out here. The biggest action that I think I'm going to take from being here is honestly continuing to learn as much as I possibly can from the homelessness. It is what I expected, which is like very positive. I just am always striving for how it could be better. Oh, I'm glad that you guys came. Well, thank you for coming. Hey, it's nice to meet you. So what are you going to do when you leave? Number one thing is a dashboard, a scorecard dashboard, so that I can see things every day. Do you feel clear? After this event, I think so. Just got to execute. And the thing is, you're going to learn more by doing shit than you're going to learn by worrying. And like worrying, like, what if that's the wrong thing? Like, take a risk take some risks, like be like, I'm gonna go into a season of taking a few risks on like, that make me feel a little uncomfortable. And that, it's okay if you fuck up, it's okay. Like nobody's gonna sit there and be like, oh my God, you fucked up. Like it's just you beating yourself up. And you know what, you'll be fine, you'll get over it. So don't be hard on yourself. Just go and do it, do what you know you need to do and you're gonna do great. I appreciate you coming and coming all the way from over there. And the chocolate. Now, my waistline does not thank you though. <laughs> thank oh my you. God. Dude, you did great. Okay. Like, great. Everyone's like, they said, they're like, oh my god, this is the best one they've been to. I was like, I expect nothing less. Like, that's what we need. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? But I was like, I also know that, like, I was super critical. Like, I'm like, there's so much we can change, but I'm just like, it was still valuable for them, which is what matters yeah, most. That, yeah, exactly. That was, that was that's all that matters the most. So, if you are interested in a workshop because you watched this vlog and you were like, that sounds not terrible, then you can actually go to the link below and you can sign up to book a call and then our team will chat with you. They will see if it's a good fit. And then if it is, we'll invite you to a workshop.